Hi, my name is Jure and today I'll share a few tips with you on how to paint a nice sunset watercolor cityscape using a photo reference. Since I started my art career quite late in my life, I have quite a few tips that masters forget to mention in their tutorials. So stick around and you'll be happy to have some good advice that no one else is going to be talking about. And I apologize for the bad lighting in this video. It's because of Russian invasion and their attacks on Ukrainian infrastructure. I had to use headlight to paint, so sorry about that. So starting with photo reference, I advise you to choose references with high contrast. Get used to painting values and use right consistency of paint. And always sketch first. And you can press hard on your pencil so it's visible underneath the paint you're applying. Always make your washes before you start painting so the paper doesn't get dry while you're making your washes. Don't pay too much attention to the names of the colors and the paints. Just use your eyes. If you see violet, a hint on violet in the clouds, then use violet paint. If there's clouds in the sky, you want to paint it wet on wet, meaning you pre-wet the area where you're going to paint and then you apply paint to it. Why? Because you don't want hard edges on the clouds. Moving to the darker areas of your painting, remember that it's not only about the colors that you're going to use, it's also about paint consistency. And I talk more about it in the video that I'll link in the description or you can press somewhere in here on the screen to see what paint consistency is and how to use it. But in two words, it's the thickness of the paint that makes it darker. To add interest into the dark areas and the areas of shade, you can use different colors, but just keep the consistency quite thick. Uh, just like in the right side of the under the bridge, you see the dark orange there. It's quite dark even when you squint. So this is how you do it. Also, one of the most important things in watercolor is simply patience. Don't be afraid to let paint dry. As you can see, I left out some spaces for the trees to the left and to the right of the bridge. And then I sprinkled some water on that area. Uh, why? Because I knew I want some faraway trees to be sort of dispersed and after that I'll be adding some details like right now I'm using dry brush technique and this is a technique when you use a lot of pigment not much water you can see to the right in my palette uh, that there's not much water there's a lot of pigment and what you do you basically load your brush with that amount of paint and just drag it Good practice would be to try and drag, try to use the dry brush technique on a separate piece of paper, on a scrap paper, and then do it on your painting. You can also learn glazing little by little, step by step, when you do this kind of paintings with simple uh, contrast. See those orange signs? on the poles, uh, they were done by simply adding a bit of orange, quite thick, but adding orange on top of darks. And again, the details of the trees and uh, the rails on top of the bridge, they're all done by uh, dry brushing, so I use quite a lot of pigment, quite thick paint to make those lines quite darker learn to love the process like here adding details sometimes can seem not fun and work consuming time consuming but if you 
learn to love every step of the process, you're gonna have a lot of fun with watercolor. Like in the beginning, I love the first washes of the skies. I love adding color like violet, orange, red, make it vibrant and beautiful. But also these details, they make me love painting process. And here's a little trick for paintings that have glowing light. Uh, you see the poles, faraway poles underneath the bridge. They're dark and our eye and mind reads them as dark, but they're actually not as dark as the ones closer to the viewer. Those faraway poles and trees are painted with, you see the wash to, to the right on the palette. They're painted usually with the darker shade of the color of the light. So if the light is yellow, like in those clouds, you should paint those poles in uh, just like the right corner of under the bridge. You should paint them with orange or dark orange. And then the eye and our brain reads that as dark and sort of having reflections and being engulfed by light. And again, watercolor is not about precision. So you saw me uh, sort of fix the middle car uh, driving away from us. I made it too small at first and then just fix it with some more paint. <laughs> That's basically it. And uh, the car to the left, uh, what you want and what you should try doing if you know there's going to be some white on your watercolor painting. You should try and leave it out. Don't paint over it. It's going to be a lot wider than even the gouache or white paint you're going to add to bring the white out. And another thing, uh, if you're trying to fill in the gaps that you left out for things like uh, I had here, this closer car to us, uh, you can start with using uh, thinner paint, thinner wash to fill it in, and then let it dry and use thicker paint. Uh, if you're afraid of sort of spoiling your painting. And here again I'm using dry brush technique with a lot of pigment, just dragging the brush over the painting to imply the wires and it adds some life to the painting. I hope you enjoyed this painting process and I hope you'll try to paint something like this with simple contrast and simple composition. You can easily paint something like this and this is why 